We made it to Key West. Yep, but it was in doubt. Yeah, the price of fuel being what it is, and it kind of got higher as we went further south. And we're thinking Key West and the cost of food, everything was going to be expensive. Yeah. And then on top of that, like Lynn said, the gas price is going out of this world. The challenge was real. We thought about it and played it over, and... Finally, I said, why don't we change Key West into Free West? So, that's what we want to talk to you about today is all the free things we found to do in Key West. Yeah, don't leave before the end because you're going to want to know what we spent on camping fees in Key West. So, let's show you Free West. We made it to Key West. Mm -hmm. um, We're at the end of the world. At the end of the world. Literally, that road was long. Yep, we're out here on, uh, I think it's called Edward Knight Pier. Just a uh, beautiful, beautiful water. I'll get Lynn to show you here a little bit over here in just a second. Just beautiful water. Yes, we're amazed at the water color down here because it's not like other beaches that we've been to. Yeah. So one of the things that we like to do when we visit new cities and stuff, especially cities that are really, really old, like Key West is, is go to the city cemetery because they are always so interesting. We joke that RV America really loves cemeteries, but there's just a lot you can learn there. We're in Key West City Cemetery, and apparently there is there's an estimated 75,000 people buried here. Now, because it is at sea level, they have to bury people above the ground. So even though the graves aren't to me extremely old, they're not like crazy old or anything, but because I see a couple from 1904, they're just, it's different than most cemeteries because the graves are above the ground. do when you go to Key West, if your husband's well, driving, is wear your seatbelt. <laughs> Just kidding. One of the things you have to do when you go to Key West is you have to go to the southernmost point, because this is the southernmost point of the entire United States, and watch a sunset. And so that is what we're doing. If you want your picture made at the most southern point of the continental United States, be prepared to stand in line. There was a much longer line earlier, so we didn't stay and we came back and now we're in this line. As one of the 
of things you absolutely have to do when you're in Key West is catch a sunset. That's right. And we're going to show you the place to go, and you're going to have to catch it next time you're down this way. But watch out for the chickens. So one of the things you'll see a lot in Key West are bicycles. They are everywhere and they have the right of way in the street. They ride in the street all the time and they're just all over the place. They always have places to put. And there's free transportation. Can you believe that? Yeah. Along Duval Street and the Old Town area there's the Duval Loop free bus service where you can hop on and hop off. It's uh, something that's really useful especially with the limited parking in that area. So when you take your pet with you to lunch, be weary because the chickens are everywhere and they really tear the dogs all to pieces because they're not used to seeing chickens everywhere. We literally had to hold Bella the whole meal. One of the fun things to do is stop and take a look at those chickens. Just kick back, find a shady, shady spot and watch the chicken and roosters do their thing all over the city. Also, if you keep your eyes open, you'll probably see iguanas. One thing you're going to have to do is get up early and see a sunrise. It is beautiful coming up over the water. So we're on the famous Duval Street. It is a street that they say you must go down when you go to Key West. Oh, T-shirts. No, no, fine. We'll come back. They really have a little bit of everything down here. Lots of shops. We wanted to see the lighthouse and we knew that would cost us a little bit, but through a couple of discounts, including an online discount that gets you 20% off, we only had to pay $10 a person to get in. This was about the only attraction we paid for and it was only $10, so what a deal. So guys, we're at the Key West Lighthouse, which is a really cool place. If you look right behind me, you'll see it. And I thought I'd give you a little history on the lighthouse. Hopefully you can hear me before I went in. So, as the story goes, this is the history. A wealthy New Jersey businessman bought the island of Key West in 1821 for, yep, $2,000. Can you imagine? He, he really got a deal when he did that in 1821. He had plans to turn the island into a major wrecking and salvage yard because of the major amount of shipwrecks that there were around it. There was always stuff washing up on the shores, and he thought, hey, I can make use of this. Um, he also wrote the Secretary of the Navy, stating that Key West would be a good port city and salvage center, and about five months later, the President of the U.S. declared it a port of entry and a Navy base wasn't very far off. Now, the next step in increasing the shipping was to build a lighthouse to help the mariners navigate. Got to, got to decrease those shipwrecks offshore. So, they decided to build a lighthouse. And the lighthouse was built in 1826. And it remained in duty for about 20 years. And then a hurricane washed it away. That was not this lighthouse. 
uh, the new Key West Lighthouse, which is this one here behind me, was built on higher ground and in a different location. It had to be a little bit safer. It was finished in 1848 and stood only 50 feet tall. It was constantly being upgraded and in 1873, new lens were purchased and installed in the tower. In 1990, it was open for visitors to come in. So let's go see what it looks like inside. Earth begins to turn seven miles. And when you gain elevation, it's good. Yeah. So Cuba is 90 miles from there, straight that way. Over there at the point. Yeah. Over there. Cuba is 90 miles from over there. Yeah. You think you can see 90 miles? I thought we just had this conversation. You can see seven miles. According to Tracy, you can only see seven miles. Thank you. See right there is the original Key West Lighthouse. You would think they would have built it back there. Well, they said they had to build the higher ground, paper ground. Oh look, right out there is Sand Key Lighthouse. Six miles. So one thing about this lighthouse, with opposite the other one that we went into, this is a spiral staircase. So very good. I think it was all. One way they really wasn't good to go down. This is the only way. And then you go down. They did point out that this is the point where they added the additional staircase to go even higher. In 1894, they added the additional height to the lighthouse. So it cost the trees to grow in the tunnel and cost them to get above the trees. The steps are also narrow. I can see what you The guy at the lighthouse said at one time there was 11 people living in this house. Another tidbit. Being a lighthouse keeper was mainly a, a male position, but this lighthouse over the years had three different women that were the principal lighthouse keeper. Usually this was after a passing of a husband, and since they knew the job so well, that they kept on, kept on to do the job. So at this point of the video, I want to include some free stuff that I found that you could do that we just didn't have time to do. So we were only able to be there a couple of days. So here are the things Danny found that we missed that are still free to do in Key West. Ask, how much did we spend on campground fees? We spent zero dollars. Zero dollars on Key West. Yeah, that was incredible, guys. Because normally it's about 179 to 199 dollars per night, but Lynn helped us find a way yeah. to have no cost camping. Lynn boondocking. Yes, we boondocked. Now, make no mistake about it, we boondocked. However, this is what we did. Uh, hopefully you know by now that we are Christians. We have a home church that we attend when we're back in Tennessee and we visit congregations when we're out on the road. And so what I did is I looked up the congregation that was in Key West that was the same 
religious affiliation that we are. And I sent them an email and said, how do you feel about us parking in your parking lot for a couple of nights with our rigs? Because we were traveling with our friends. And the guy messaged me back and he said, sure. So we just, as you can see, it was a great area to park. Uh, they had water. They told us we could feel free to use their water if we wanted. We had plenty in our tank, so we didn't need to use their water. This boondocking that Lynn found for us kept those costs down. We turned Key West into Free West when it comes to camping costs. Yes, so don't forget about that source for places to stay. We hope that we've shown you that even though gas prices have skyrocketed, and believe me, we went from like 80 bucks filling up this RV here to 150, so they are insane. But there's still ways you can cut corners other places to kind of, it's not gonna make up the total difference, but it's gonna keep you on the road a little more. Yeah, keep you closer to your budget. Yes. Like we did here. We just didn't do a lot of things that cost a lot of money. We could have took a lot of tours. We could have took a lot of boat rides or other things that uh, would have been fun to do. But with the price of gas, we decided to, hey, let's make it free. Yeah, and we are, we are people who we just like to see things. We like to explore and to see things. And to us, that's the fun of it. Yeah, so we really enjoyed it. We didn't feel cheated. And, uh, and we hope that uh, this gives you some ideas that you can use here in Key West or any other place. There's yep. ways to save money. There's always going to be a way to save money when you're out traveling if you choose. Until next time, God bless and many safe economical travels. And go RV America. <laughs>